there, I'm Dave Dickens and welcome to my workshop. Now then, there's something a bit different today. Now this is my pride and joy. This is my keyboard. And um, well, I've used it in uh, one of the tracks that I recorded. And you'll have noticed that it was by a window when I recorded that track. In fact, it was by a window for quite a lot of last year. And uh, it didn't like that at all. And unfortunately, the lovely white keys have gone a horrible yellow. Now, the sun also affected the rubber coated sliders and the knobs and turned them all sticky and gooey and horrible. Now, I've fixed that to an extent by washing them in alcohol and washing the rubber off effectively but I'll come back to that in a bit. Now I wasn't sure what to do but this was a lovely keyboard and the yellow keys do make it look pretty horrible. I know it's only a cosmetic thing but uh, I don't know it somehow feels better to play if it looks nice and I looked online and the, the best way of making the keys white is to use hydro hydrogen peroxide. But that involves taking the key, keys out and putting them in plastic bags and leaving them in the sun with the hydrogen peroxide. And of course we're in the middle of winter so that's not really a good option at the moment. I also had a go at trying to sand them down. Which to be honest, was a stupid thing to do and it didn't really change the fact that they are still yellowed. So I found an online forum where a number of people had had this issue and right down at the bottom of this forum somebody had said oh please contact us if you've got problems like this and we'll help you sort it out and that was Nectar. So the people who make the uh, keyboard so I thought, okay, I'll contact them. And I did, and I got a reply back in a matter of hours from a really nice lady who explained that I could buy a new key bed, the whole lot, all together for $75, and that they would send me free replacements for all of the sliders and the knobs. Now, it was from the States, and I was a little bit worried that I was going to incur lots of transport costs and import duties, but uh, she let me know that there was a UK warehouse, so that the key bed would come from the UK warehouse. So, I went ahead and ordered one, and it arrived a few days ago. Very well packed. So, I thought what I would do is a video showing how to replace the key bed on a Nectar P6 controller keyboard. And they very kindly sent me through some uh, documents to help me do that. So, let's get going. Now, it wouldn't be right to do a video like this without a bit of unboxing, would it? So let's have a look. Ooh, look at those lovely white keys. <laughs> okay. Now, the lady, whoops, put the box to one side. Now, the lady at Nectar did say that the way to clean the keys is using the hydrogen peroxide, uh, but on this keyboard, you've got to take each key off. They don't come off in sort of sections like they do in some of the cheaper keyboards, because these are all weighted and sprung loaded. Beautiful keyboard. Um, so it can be done, but it's a bit of a fiddle. So what I thought I would do is change this keyboard over, and then in the summer, I will have a go and probably make a video of it, of trying to get these white using the hydrogen peroxide, because I think that might be a good trick to do. So. Well, here we are. This is the replacement. Now then, let me find the instructions. Now I've put it on a mat so I don't damage the top uh, and I've turned the keyboard over. 
and this the instructions tell me that I've got 33 screws to remove and these are ones shown in green on this little diagram here so these are all the recessed screws so 33 screws okay here we go Screws on this end are much smaller. Don't worry about those pads, that's just something I put on there. Some of these screws are in very tight. It's a bit of a fiddle to, uh, to get them undone uh, without ruining the heads. Um, also helps to have a screwdriver that's a little bit magnetic. Well, the instructions said 33 screws. I've found 32, and um, I think my counting's good, but uh, I can't see any others, so I think I must have them all. Okay. Step two. Okay, now I've got to get inside. So I'm going to just swing this round put some clamps behind the cloth there um, in the hope that I can use that just to prop this up. Let's see what we've got. Okay, I think I'm just going to have to go the other way around. Let's turn it over. Oh, I see, yeah, okay, I've got it. So that back there. Whoops. Well, I need to unclip the keyboard which has uh, just popped out of its own accord. <laughs> Probably not the ideal way of doing it. I'm just going to rest that down there now. Okay, lesson learned. If you're doing this, it's definitely worth propping up the uh, the top there on a piece of wood. I've put a block of wood underneath there and leaning it against something. This plug is the, the one that's just come out of the uh, printed circuit board there. This is the keyboard. It's actually screwed down to the base so I need to uh, remove that screw. Now the instructions say I've actually got to remove all of these um, plugs here, so that is easier said than done. Let's see if I can tackle this one here. Right. Okay, that one's come out. Well, I've got it out eventually. It really didn't want to come out. It was a bit of a struggle. Okay, so now I need to set this top aside. So I can deal with this key bed and we need to flip it again. And undo some more screws. And they suggested having another pot for those because they're a different size. So here goes. Tell you what, it's really shaky hand stuff this is. Right. Ooh, okay. So there's the old key bed. Let's move that one out of the way. Let's get a new one. Looks promising. That's better. Uh, 
Okay, I think that looks all right. Just flip it a minute. Yep, yeah, I'll put the rest of the screws in. Did the old trick of managing to lose a screw, <laughs> even though I had a tin to put them all in. Ah, but I found it. Okay, so let's flip this over again. And now see if we can get all the wiring back. So I put a piece of wood at the back there. It helped to have a torch just to uh, help me line up the holes underneath. But uh, once they were lined up, it wasn't too bad. Okay, this was the uh, difficult one to get in, to get out, I should say. So if it goes back easier. That seems well seated. Get the uh, keyboard one back in. That's that done. And finally this one on the circuit board. Need to move that that way. That looks like it's in tight. Okay. So now I need to screw that back down. So I need the bracket. To be honest, it's a little bit of a fiddle getting this bracket back on again. Um, they they had the bracket going through this loop here, but I can't actually do that. So uh, I'm going to try a different way. Right, through there, onto there, screw down, get in the hole, that's it, I'll pull that this way, I don't want to damage the wire. Okay, in theory, that's that, everything's put back, all the uh, plugs are in nice and tight, so... Let's just double check that. Let's get that all back and assemble it again. Oh, there's nice white keys. Smashing. Okay, here we go. Flip it. Okay, I'll be back when I've screwed it all together. What is handy is these deep recesses are shaped in, uh, in a funnel shape so the screw is forced into the hole at the bottom which makes life a lot easier. And the last screw. It's obviously important not to over tighten these, they're just uh, self-threading screws. Okay, let's move all this out of the way. And uh, flip it. And there we have a beautiful brand new keyboard with lovely keys. And these are supposed to be UV protected, so hopefully they won't suffer the same problem that I had before. But that said, obviously, it doesn't uh, help anything with plastic to uh, leave it in the sun so uh, best to keep it in the shade if you can well there we have it a beautiful set of very white keys now then you can take these keys off and Nectar very kindly sent me instructions of how to do that so I think I'll, in the summer I will whip these keys out and uh, see if I can whiten them um, and that may well be another video. But uh, in the meantime, I'd like to thank Nectar for responding so quickly and uh, being so helpful. And I think it's, it's worth $75 to have that new keyboard in place. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this sort of content or if you like guitar making or making music, please hit subscribe. I will see you soon. In the meantime, I'm going to go and try this out.